so I am mildly gothic. Um, we're letting the hair out for at least this part because it's not going to matter for the rest of it. So this is the mane that I deal with. Um, but, so today we're going to be doing a different kind of an artsy thing. And so today I'm going to be doing a drawing. Um, the plan for the drawing that I have in my head is like a broke, like a ripped velvet opera glove with some pearls, a dead corsage with some, you know, wilting flowers, and then some banners with some words on them. Um, as far as what we've got, I've got my laptop over here uh, with some reference images. I'm unfortunately not somebody who can just think of something and without seeing it, put it on paper. I typically actually need to, to see some kind of a reference. It doesn't have to be exactly, but I need a general idea of what I'm doing so I can actually translate it correctly. I've got some paints, because I tend to do a lot of mixed media stuff. So I've got some of my paints, not all of them. Um, water, brushes, Sharpies, um, normal graphite, water-soluble graphite, charcoal that I'm probably not going to be using today. Charcoal gets very messy. I have literal like crayons, the twistables, uh, colored pencils, and I also have uh, Copic markers. Um, not sponsored, but I really have enjoyed these markers over the years. They're double-sided, so they've got a brush end and a flat end. Um, these markers are very smooth. They're designed for, I think, a lot more illustrative work, which I really, really like. Um, unfortunately, they are very expensive, so shout out to my wonderful mother for buying me lots of them over the years. Thanks, Mom! Um, but I figured I'd just do a little bit of an intro so I can kind of explain what's going on. I do still have to figure out how I'm actually going to film it, hopefully some kind of overview, but we'll get to that. Um, a lot of filler words. I would not be winning a Toastmasters with this intro. But anyways, uh, <laughs> Uh, that's the general idea, that's what we're gonna try to do, and so let's see what we get! So I always try to start off my drawings super lightly. I like to work with either um, a number 2B or a 4B pencil to kind of start with. 2B is what your, you know, basic school pencil is, um, and a 4B is darker than that. So the way pencils work, um, if the higher the number and a B, the softer the lead is, meaning it's a lot easier to make a much darker mark. But once you get start going on to the other side of that, which is an H, it actually is a much harder pencil, and so it takes a lot more effort to make a hard mark. They tend to be naturally very, very light. Uh, so I like to work with the middle of that range. I find it the easiest uh, to kind of control the shading that I'm getting with that. Um, a lot of this initial is me kind of debating and wondering whether or not starting with a hand as a the first drawing that I'm gonna do on this channel was a good idea or not. Uh, I think it ended up turning out all right. But really in the beginning, I'm just trying to block out where it is on the page. I used to have a really bad problem of not positioning it well. So I would end up with it way too close to one side or way too much dead space, not enough space for my actual drawing. I think I've gotten better at that, um, you know, over the years of the process. Um, the camera does kind of shift around a little bit every time I, you know, shake the table with an eraser. But for the most part, everything stayed stable. I don't... I was gonna say, like, oh, this idea came to me when... But I don't really remember when this idea came to me. Um, I just kind of was like, ooh, velvet glove, pearls. That sounds interesting. Um, Mildly, you can see at certain points that I'm regretting doing all of these super tiny pearls. A lot of them aren't super symmetrical or circular. I Hopefully it'll work out when I start giving them some shading and some character. But the biggest issue with hands is understanding your perspective and your scale. Because the relationship of the fingers to each other kind of changes depending on what angle you're looking at the hand from. And while you're starting the base outline, it can look super weird. So you're looking at it and you're like, there's no way this is going to turn into a hand. It's just not right. And what it probably means is you do one finger a little too big, one part of the hand a little too small, and you just got to kind of keep shifting things around until it looks proportional and correct. Hands are hard. There's no getting around it. Hands are just kind of one of the most difficult things to draw. Um, but, you know, with some practice, like with anything, they're not too bad. I debated for a while whether or not I actually wanted to add a flower to it or a third element. Um, and I kind of settled on yes, because I thought it needed something else. Uh, you'll see me start blocking that out eventually. Uh, the flower that I ended up choosing was a lily. Not a lily, sorry. 
the flower that I ended up choosing was a tulip. Uh, the main flower is supposed to be a decaying, you know, withering tulip. Uh, surrounded by some drying and, you know, kind of other dead flowers. But really, the majority of this video is going to be me tweaking the fingers and the hands. Hand singular. And really just trying to get that proportion, you know, to look right, to sit right, and all of that. As far as the thought process, so again, start with a super light outline is what I typically do. And as I get more confident in different parts of the drawing, I go over them with more intensity to make them a stronger outline. Um, it also helps you then kind of like build up from a super light layer, which I guess you can almost call a skeleton, to then getting to the more intense or detailed and refined layers. And the most refined layer is, I showed the Copic markers at the beginning, but they actually also make a fine tip kind of like a fine point sharpie, um, which is what you'll see me use eventually when I get to lining all of the outline. I'm not entirely sure if it's supposed to be ripped or burned at the bottom of the glove yet. I haven't decided, but I went with that kind of, you know, torn, almost more like it's paper than fabric, so I might have to go with a more burned aesthetic, uh, which should still be interesting. I'm sure I'll figure out a way to, you know, color that in a way that it makes sense. Um, there are some points, if you see me reaching over to my computer, I'm just pulling up a different reference image. Um, I used a variety to try to combine to get a picture that I liked. And you'll see I defined that harsh line at the bottom of the thumb, because again, this is not just a hand, it's supposed to be a glove. And if you look up most velvet gloves, that thumb is a separate piece and it gets defined differently. Uh, so another challenge when it comes to coloring is going to be making sure that I get the shine on that different part of the fabric right so it can look how I want it to with that kind of expensive luxe feel. Now currently I'm just talking. I'm not sure if I want to talk over the entire thing or not. Um, and so here we go, starting to define some of that flower. I used to think that I was really, really bad at flowers. Actually, no. When I was in like elementary school, I thought I was like really, really good at flowers. I was like, I'm so good at drawing. It was these super flat, like 2D images with way too many colors in them that I was convinced blended together well. But my mother always supported me. She is a fantastic artist, um, which is probably where I get any skill that I have from. But I guess I've just kind of kept trying them and I eventually found a style that I liked. I really think with drawing, you can look at realism artists and compare yourself to them and be like, wow, I'm not good because I can't do that. But then I think about it and I don't really want to draw realism. I don't want to draw a photo. I like this style and I think I've adapted to it quite well. And you know what? I think that's all right. There's many different ways to do the same thing. And as long as you're enjoying it, I think that's all that matters. And now this is with drawing, with painting, I still don't paint realistic, um, but one of my favorite things to paint is space. I have a lot of space paintings. I'll probably do another one at some point. Um, you can see me thinking if when I'm tapping my fingers against the paper, just trying to work out. So this is supposed to be a corsage, but I didn't really plan what it was gonna look like. And also it's kind of hard to find images of like a wilting corsage. So I just kind of had to interpret some images of actual like wedding or prom corsages and extrapolate kind of some of the details that tend to be in them. So there's usually those little stick things with, you know, small flowers on them, a bunch of leaves. I didn't really do any ribbons. Um, there's a lot of leaves. I guess those were the ribbons to me. Uh, there's some smaller flowers on the side, you know, really just trying to make it something big that it would cover it so if it was alive it would probably you know cover more space look more full and pretty but it's kind of decaying so it doesn't have to be quite as full or impressive as a traditional corsage might be you know one would think but i think that's enough rambling from me for a minute um if i see something else that comes up and I think is worth commenting on or is interesting, then you might hear from me again. But other than that, 
um, a lot of this is trial and error. It's picking different points to work on. You can see I got tired of the pearls, so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the banners blocked out. So it's a lot of back and forth, um, accepting that, you know, when I first put down the pencil, it's not gonna be perfect. And, you know, trying to work out what I want the full image to look like. And this is why we start in pencil. Uh, pencil is wonderfully forgiving, unlike most other mediums. So I like to spend a lot of time making sure I get the base drawing exactly how I like it so that when I go to color, you know, and fill all of it in, that I can have some faith that it's going in the direction that I want it to. Still unsure what colors I'm going to put for the corsages, but that's a problem for another day. That's not a problem for right now. Uh, banners are fun if you've never done banners. They're actually really simple, really easy. But yeah, it's a lot of back and forth erasing, making things darker, making things more defined. I don't know if there's really much to say about the process. I think you can see most of my thought process as I'm going through, kind of what I'm bouncing between, what I'm focusing on, what I'm not you know, what I'm paying attention to, so. Overall, um, I hope you enjoy watching this piece come to life. I'm quite pleased with how the final drawing came out and I can't wait to color it in. So, now that we've finally gotten to the outlining of it, um, you'll notice that I'm not always exactly following my pencil line. And that's because sometimes there's several of them there, if I've gone over an area a variety of times. And sometimes, like when it comes to the, the flower, I drew very straight lines and I actually want the final outline to be a little bit more wavy, especially with these ones, they're supposed to be dead. Uh, dead flowers are much more wilted and crinkly than live flowers. And so I modified some of my edges and those outlines to, to fit more of what I want the true final look to be. Uh, unfortunately, some of the pearls kept not being cooperative when I was trying to get to outlining those. Um, this part, I probably bounce around more than I even did with a pencil because of that nature of not exactly following my pencil drawing, you run into some interesting issues where there's a missing background piece that you didn't think you, there needed to be a line there because there was something over it. But now that you've modified the something that was over it, you need to figure out where to fill in the line or what comes next to it or behind it. Uh, you'll see that a lot with the pearls. A lot of the pearls that I start outlining do not line up with the pencil drawing that's underneath, so that resulted in some weird tweaking of some of the fingers, you know, in some of the general space. Um, it's not a big deal, but that can be one of the more challenging things when it comes to outlining it, is that, oh, I have a pretty drawing in pencil, but now I'm trying to make it, you know, permanent with the ink. So that comes with its own set of challenges and adjustments that have to be made simply for the fact of outlining it in ink. So I try to outline the things that I'm very confident in first. So like the flower, the thumb, uh, some of the pearls are one of the last things I get to. But typically outlining what I'm most confident in first typically results in the few, fewest issues overall, I would say. Um, and once I'm done outlining, you'll see all of the pencil gets erased so that in the next one, we can color it. 
also, I know it can be hard to tell the amount of time that's elapsed uh, when this goes by. But this entire process was at least an hour and a half, if not longer. So that's why I'm going to end up splitting it into two parts, because just getting this outline done was quite a bit of time. So enjoy the continuation of this process.
it is an hour and 45, I don't know, enough time later. And all we've got, um, all we've got, what we've got is the outline drawing. I haven't put the words in um, that I do need to do before I start coloring it. Um, but I am using my phone as a recording device and it has limited storage. So basically it started yelling at me when I got close towards the end of this drawing. And considering it, this video is already almost as long as my last one, uh, I'm gonna split it into two parts. And so this first one is just going to be the, you know, the process that you have just watched with this line drawing. And I'm going to do another one for the coloring. That one will probably be, I say, I'm thinking that one's gonna be a little bit shorter. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, it should hopefully still be fun and cool because I gotta work, you know, this out. And so the words, the words as I have currently decided is um, beauty is a fading luxury withering to pain eternal. You know, we going for the dark spooky vibes. Um, as far as outro images for this one, I'll probably throw up some of the other artworks that I've done in this style. Um, just because why not? It's kind of fun. It's kind of cool. Um, I've actually got one. I got this one. I did this one a little while ago. Um, but as far as finishing this piece, that will be another time. Um, I hope it was at least interesting to see the process, how it got to here. Um, every time you see me tapping my fingers, that's me wondering what I'm doing next. And, um, so if you'll notice, and especially in that last bit we started getting towards the end, there's something popping on screen, and that's my head, and these. Um, I like to listen to music when I'm doing my drawings, and unfortunately I too tend to get very close to the paper, so my head kept popping in frame. I hope that wasn't too distracting. I don't think it was that bad, um, but I felt I should <laughs> uh, mention what it was so that it wasn't just some random thing that was popping in frame. Because they're headphones clearly, but these are, you know, slightly different than normal headphones. Uh, but that's enough rambling to go at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed um, this drawing process and that you'll tune in for when I color it. Uh, if you have any suggestions, I guess is the words. If you want to, you can let me know, leave a comment. Um, any engagement, you know, feed, feed the hungry YouTube nonsense. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for watching, and again, I hope you enjoyed, and you'll tune in to when I finally color it.